Morning all, let's have a look at the crunch match in Ukraine versus China in the last round and on board one of that match Vasily Ivanchuk, a very exciting player 2769 is playing against Wang Hao 2726 so he plays d4 and we see knight f6 after c4 e6 is it going to be a Nimzo Indian defense or a Queen's Indian? After knight c3, Ivanchuk doesn't mind the pin, the classical Nimzo Indian defense, named after Aaron Nimzovich, author of My System. Okay, he plays e3, which is the Rubenstein variation, very solid continuation, which uh, a former club player of mine, Steve Weston, uh, rest in peace. He he recommended as White in this position as one of White's strongest moves available. It is very solid. It does lock in Bishop though. Okay. After castles, Bishop d3. And now we see d5. So Black putting pressure on that c4 pawn here. After knight f3, we see b6. So will Black want to take on c4? Maybe play Bishop b7 later. White now prompts the dark square bishop to take on c3 or retreat with a3. Now, okay, would it be too controversial to retreat the bishop here to say d6? Does it run into anything nasty or bishop e7? Let's have a quick check here, actually what's going on here. If bishop d6, what does it run into? Actually, too bad here. Uh, you might think b4, b4 to try and uh, play c5. I think black can now just take. So that might actually be a playable continuation, bishop d6. Uh, but um, preferred is bishop just taking on c3, which is uh, logical just to double the pawns. Okay, but there is extra tension on the center for opening up the position. Um, usually, if if you take on c3, you'd want to sort of often play d6 and say something like knight d7, e5, try and keep the position closed. With the central tension here, it seems as though the bishop pair is going to have more scope. And with the pawn on d6, this diagonal isn't as dangerous. But on d5, it looks a bit scarier for the bishop pair potentially. Black plays now c6. Okay, strengthening d5 as though. It's a kind of Slav Nimzo Indian hybrid. Now white takes on d5, okay, and it, again it looks as though the position is opening up a little bit after this. So queen e2. This diagonal in particular seems ripe later for a4 and bishop a3. Knight c6, as though the idea for black is the c4 square. If you can play a move like knight a5 and try and put pressure on this backward pawn, as we've seen in some other games in this tournament then will black have sufficient counterplay? After castles, black does indeed go for knight a5. And now we see this, this diagonal. In the winner variation of the French defence, this diagonal is often important for white trying to get a bishop across it to exploit those weakened dark squares. Black hasn't got a dark square bishop in this position, so it makes this move particularly effective. Rook e8. Now knight e5. And it's difficult to challenge this knight. How can the knight be challenged that easily? If knight d7 is coming away from that soft spot, I think we're going to have horrible tactics on h7 here, especially after this weakness of the last move, coming off f7 here. Let's have a quick look at this, this idea of trying to get rid of this knight. Uh, so I think bishop h7 or even queen h5. Queen h5. Or knight takes f7 is mentioned. Does bishop h7 actually work here? It could just be equal actual check position. Something like f4 and maybe the eyes of rook f3. Is this dangerous? Maybe technically the engine seems to be holding it on brief, brief analysis here. Okay. <laughs> and now it's changed its mind to plus 3 after the check. Something's cropped up. 
Rook F3. It looks it looks fair, fairly dangerous. The attack just rages on. It's like Black's pieces are shut down on the Queen side and not really helping here. This attack is very dangerous here. Just with Bishop H7, it seems. So it's just not being seen on a certain depth. The strength of this attack. So knight takes e5, just with the idea now of contesting f8. So if black can't challenge on the f file, if there's no, if queen d7 doesn't work, try rook e7 here. Check. And now bishop a3 is dangerous. Yes, it all looks good actually. Really, if we go back to this position, so it looks as though knight d7. Um, Let's have a quick look at knight takes f7 as well. So say so takes, so sacking the knight instead of the bishop, maybe even much more clear cut because actually here we've always got the option of bishop a3. So say king e7, bishop a3, and that's pretty nasty. That has to give up the knight. That's pretty nasty stuff. So um, what does the, the king do here? Again, bishop a3. Okay, to put the rook in front this time. Queen h7. This is much stronger than. It seems much, much stronger than sacking the bishop, just sacking the knight on f7. Okay, so say knight c6, bishop g6, weaving and mating that. This looks absolutely dire. Okay, and now here, the rooks want to come in the game, so let's go with e4. To, I guess the idea is to try and get the rooks in the game. Like with f3, if takes, then f3 is, is quite nifty. But then e3, so let's have a quick check here. Now we'll get, bring the rook in like this. So a6, rook e4, prompting e5 to stop rook f4 check. It looks crushing, yeah. The king's just in a crossfire here, and the rook's coming in as well to finish off the job. <coughs> So it looks really dangerous this position after knight e5. <coughs> Pardon me. Pardon me. So black played knight e4. And this knight's kicked now just with f3. So if he takes on c3, I wonder about queen c2. Isn't that just trapping the knight? Uh, it can't take on c3 surely. Knight takes c3, just queen c2, okay. And if queen c7, this pin, you just exploit the pin surely until to, to win a piece. Um, this is winning a piece, isn't it? Nope, knight e2 trick. <laughs> if it takes, then there's queen c2. Got to be careful here. But bishop h7, okay, let's go with bishop h7. Just leaving the pin with bishop d3. Okay. It's funny, you, you know, you think these these are simple tactics. There's there's no simple tactic. It seems bishop d2, knight e2, check. All the, always these checks. They 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 show the actual complexity of the position. Um, what about bishop b2 as a way of trying to win that knight? That's good though. Okay, that's much better. So, the knight. Uh, retreated to d6. Okay, and now we see bishop a3. Black plays now bishop b7. And now white just simply takes on d6. Maybe it is an important defensive piece to remove. And now plays f4. So he's got immediate threats of queen or oh, queen h5. And these two soft spots. Uh, Look, on guard. This knight and bishop don't seem that relevant here to black's king safety. Remember, black is though a twenty-seven two six. As he really, he's misevaluated the positions from this opening. It seems as though this taking on c three in conjunction with d five is, you know, he's given white a great game. And the attack seems very strong now after g six. Queen g four. There's lots of threats like f five just undermining this this triangle of pawns. Knight c four. 
Kids in e3, the queen just retreats back. Queen c7. Now again, f5 looks tempting, although is this knight of relevance? I think f5 is tempting, but if it actually played bishop takes c4, so he didn't want his knight on e5 being interfered with. And let's have a quick check of the effectiveness of f5 versus bishop c4. Bishop c4 is given as one of the stronger moves. If f5, in fact, black turns out to be okay. Say knight takes e5, d takes, e takes. You know, this pawn's just too weak. So it's very important. If white wants to play f5, I think he has to get rid of this knight on c4, which is what he does. Okay, although it's giving black potentially, you know, liberated bishop on g2, but f5 is now strong and dangerous. Threatening nasties on f7, etc. Lots of threats here. f6 is played. Okay, and now a very surprising continuation of the attack. Of course, this pin, you don't want to move this knight and have, have the queen taken, so it's not knight g4. But uh, guess what white plays <laughs> in this position if I give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, white plays fg, he's just sacking a knight, it's very towel like this game. After f takes e5, rook f7, wow. Okay, so he's potentially on h7, but this rook on the 7th, what is he going to do with it? After queen c6, is the queen tied down now to g2? Is black really going to just counter sacrifice with queen g2? Another very surprising move <laughs> is played here. Uh, if I give you 10 seconds here, guess what white plays in this position to carry on the attack? So black really is threatening just to counter sacrifice a piece with queen g2. Be aware of that. In your move decision. So, what do you play here? 10 seconds. Okay. Brilliant stuff. G takes h7, <laughs> offering the rook now. So, it's two pieces being sacrificed now. So, the rook's taken, and now we've got an attack running with checks. Check. Or is it? Now, queen g7 looks tempting. But maybe not as good as the game continuation. Uh, this is maybe a very, very important moment. Um, Queen g7 or another move. What would you play in this position if I give you 10 seconds here? Okay. White plays actually h8 first, queening. He wants the rook away like this to be able to maybe make this more effective. Let's just check this out in this position. Does actually queen g7 have any effect? Yes, it does. It's a strong move as well. <laughs> so king d8, you can just queen here, and the attack rages on anyway. So, okay, a little finesse, just making sure. <laughs> so, h8 first. Okay, queen g7 check. The king ventures to d6 here. It looks as though this is the lawnmower coming out here after king d8. Um, he went to d6. If he goes to d8, let's quickly check this out. If if check here, now if queen e8, it looks as though rook f8. If king d7, it looks as though the king's being brought out horribly after rook f7 check. In any case, if it goes to here, then queen e5. So in the game continuation, uh, we saw king d6 straight off the bat. Um, I think now <laughs> this, this is this is interesting. If if queen e5 is strong, but what was played was actually d takes e5 check, offering the king the opportunity to go to d5. Now with this move, actually black resigned. It looks as though that there could be a forced mate with rook d1. Let's check this out. I'm pretty sure rook d1 is a forced mate. It's a mate in free. So queen g5 threatening queen f4. Is that absolutely the strongest move? Is there a check move instead? 
if you want to run with checks it's possible apparently running with checks until queen f4 it's a sort of reassurance of running with checks but technically queen g5 is the quicker mate here if black tries to contest f4 then rook d4 so that's two threats of queen f4 and rook d4 being set up there with queen g5 simply protecting the e3 pawn what a towel like game <laughs> indeed what a towel like game let's uh delete those remaining moves after that king d5 let's check out was there really no, there was i guess absolutely it was no defense but um so here it's just the mopping up job. Let's have a look in overview and summary. It looked like a Nimzo Indian gone wrong, actually, because this idea against the Rubenstein variation, um, where White's got the bishop pair, but d5 looks as though some, sometimes Black can retreat here and take on c4, and this bishop's okay here on this diagonal. It's a different type of position altogether. But instead, Black giving up the bishop pair seems a bit suspect with the potential for the position just naturally opening up and in particular this this diagonal is sensitive here for that it's like white has got an extra piece on the dark squares here a menacing piece and that affects the soft spots really if you look at the soft spot vulnerability here in this game especially after knight e5 the knight being kicked but it looks as though yes this is very dangerous now after bishop takes d6 very interesting decision he's really making the most out of this rook naturally placed on f1 to blast through on the king side very strong attacking pressure that knight which is now stumbled towards the center is just captured very shortly now as a prelude to playing f5 it's a very very towel like attack now sacrificing the knight first and then now against this queen g2 sacrificing the rook for a beautiful final king chase i think this is must be one of ivanchuk's nicest attacking wins in the tournament and what a great recovery and with the, with this win uh dramatic changes of results that china were knocked into fourth position and ukraine snatched the third position so very very crucial win uh, for Ukraine over China in round 11 hope you enjoyed this game comments or questions on YouTube what a brilliant game thanks very much